What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Drop Talk. Today we got the first time. First time we got someone that is not a surfer. I mean, he's a surfer, but he's not known by being a surfer. Welcome, Abraham. I'm not even trying to say your last name because I was trying to say backstage and he's so how, how you pronounce your last, your last name? Well, uh, I say it Hochstrasser, but it's not probably German because I don't speak German. But uh, what, what it comes from? My uh, grandfather came from uh, Germany, to Mexico. Germany to Mexico. And you are born in Mexico, right? I was born in Mexico, okay. yeah. <laughs> coming here and accepting to you know being part of this uh, i was saying that is the first time that we don't have a, a surfer but you, you this season especially you've been putting a lot of effort um on your uh, evolution uh, on on surfing right so you are a multiple time free ride jet ski world champion but uh, that's how you made your name right not by surfing what what uh, came to your mind what's your goal like to start dedicating your time to surf uh big waves yeah thank you thank you first for the invitation it's always a pleasure to collaborate with with you and your team thank, thank you very you. much uh yeah as you say i'm not i'm not a surfer i'm a i'm, I'm a, i don't know a jet ski free rider that's what i uh I've been doing the last couple of years, and that's why uh, uh, that's what I came to Nazareth. You know? uh, uh, the first time that I was here, like I think it was around 2015. Uh, the, that time there was uh, this uh, world tour um, stop here in Nazareth uh, uh, competitions in uh, Praia de Vila in in the world. No, well, that was the first year that I came. It was in uh, Praia Grande. Oh, okay, so in before Finca. the contest here uh -huh. in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was before the contest here. And a couple of years uh, before that, I, I was not part of the tour at that time, but they did one uh, contest in Super Tubos. Oh, crazy. Actually, that it was like, everyone talked that it was the best day ever of free riding competition because it was Super Tubos on. Like pumping, yeah, it was pumping on and this barreling, and some of the guys got the really cool shots uh, inside the barrel on the, on the on that on that wave, but uh, yeah, my first time was in Praia Grande in Sintra, 2015, and we were invited after the contest to visit uh, Nazare, the biggest wave in the world. Uh, we came here and uh, we rode. Uh, that year on a small day, uh, but we get introduced like uh, to the whole yeah. village. And after that, um, they switched the contest. That was the opening for uh, bring the contest into Nazare. And uh, I later in a few years, uh, they were doing the tour in Praia de la Vila. And they did, they did it for a, for a few years, right? I think it was like two or three years that we came for And that. you 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 all you did it in the contest here? I never got lucky in Nazareth. No? No. I uh, always, so you, I thought you won here, no? No, I never won. I always got like second. Mm -hmm. I think it was my best, second. But uh, other than that, I always have uh, issues and troubles with, uh, with the competition work. Yeah. With the uh, riding, it was always been super great and and super cool. And uh, so, so the question was, um, what 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 was the the switch point when you decided, okay, I'm a free ride world champion, 
But since I'm in Nazareth, not only in Nazareth, because I, I know that you've been uh, surfing in Puerto too, but what was the switch point? Like, I'm going to dedicate some of my time to, um, you know, start towing in, start paddling, start to, to, you know, surf some big waves. Yeah. Well, the process has been, um, I mean, I've been riding uh, the jet ski and the wave runner especially like the sit-down ski, because everyone talk about the jet ski as the way, sit-down ski. And that's a commercial name for the standoff for Kawasaki. And yeah. uh, the, the Wave Runners, which is Yamaha name, actually, for that sit-down ski. The sit-down ski, I used to race the sit-down skis back in the, like, in 90-something. I started racing, not doing the, the free riding thing on the water, like freestyling on the waves, which is free riding. Um, I used to com do competitions on the lake, also in the ocean, with the stand-up and the sit-down ski. Okay. I competed for many, many years. I was uh, multiple times Mexican champion. And I was uh, in 97, 98, 90, I was top 10 in the world, in the pro class in the world, uh, riding the sit-down. So the ski, it's been like, for me, it's, it's yeah, been it's like, like normal. Uh, yeah. I ride uh, skis everywhere. I've been riding on the ocean because I like it. I always like the always like the riding on the ocean. And but my story was that I have a huge accident and then quit racing, and then start like a different goal in my life, which was like a build a brand and my company and like growing in a, in the job. And then I stopped racing and jet ski forever, like like for good, like racing. And I was doing it only uh, as a hobby. And and then this new thing, that because the free start, the free riding thing, it's kind of new. It's it doesn't have that much time. Like how much time we're we talking about? Like the sports, it must be has like 15, 20 years. Okay. That is so start developed. Okay. Okay. So you got you got injured. Uh, you already comp competing on on free ride, right? Uh, so no, that was only close course racing. That was. And you got ah yes, because you 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 told me that story already. I, I guess you you going there, right? You, the way you got injured. Yeah, I got injured in uh, Lake Havasu City in the World Finals in one of racing the, racing. Yeah, another wave runner hit on me, and break my hip. And I got surgery, and I was like uh, this close to get like on a wheelchair. Hmm. So that recovery took me for almost a year to get back into fitness and be able to 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 do sports and and all that. So I decided to stop that and uh, focus on a different thing. But um, when I get back to uh, I could be able to ride, I always. Um, like to ride the stand up on the waves, jumping. So I keep doing that because that it was my hobby. That's that's how I grow. So a couple of years later, um, this new f uh, free riding thing became bigger, 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 and I always has that uh, that that desire to come back and racing because because I was the jet ski was was your was your passion your your, your, your thing passion. Yeah. And and this new format was super excited, and that's when I start like doing the switching to surfing. That's the the answer because the competitions in free riding since the beginning, uh, the criteria to um, to to the judging, it's fifty percent surfing tricks, fifty percent air tricks. So. Because the, the, the guys who put together this uh, new concept of free riding, they want to, um, some of them were surfers. Mm -hmm. So they want to bring that surfing uh, into the free ride. Life into the jet ski, which obviously from at the beginning, uh, we were like, we always talk about that in the free riding uh, Language. How, how's the the like the community feel about it? They they enjoy the format. Yeah, yeah. Some some people like it. Some other they don't agree with it. Especially depends where you are because 
because it's hard to bring a ski into a good surf. Mm-hmm. Because the good waves, there's always surfers, yeah. and surfers don't like of anything course. else. Yeah. So you cannot uh, have these waves. But some people like it. For especially, there's a, there's a crew in in United States, my mentor, Taylor Curtis, and uh, his crew were like true core, like free riders, surf riding. So those guys were like focused more on, uh, on surf riding more than doing these crazy tricks, tricks yeah. crazy jumps. But for the sport and in other places, like for Australia, for example, uh, Australia, they love like uh, freestyling. Yeah. And these guys, they do the craziest uh, air tricks ever. The crazy guys, you're going to find it. Cra- crazier than you? It's men. <laughs> you, don't, you don't believe it. Like, they could send it. I think it's because also because of the age. You know, yeah. like uh, younger now, people. Now I don't want to get injured anymore. Yeah, of course. Like, of course. I will not do it. And but you still, you still flying high. You still eating, eating, yeah. uh, eating big sections and, and flying really high. Like not not too long ago, but a week ago, you, you just said like this crazy session we were talking uh, before. You got a uh, little funky on your yeah. knee. Oh shit! But uh, I understand what you what you mean. It's like um, as you get older, and, and especially after uh, being injured, you start being more uh, cautious. Cautious? I don't, I don't know if it's the right yeah. uh, way to yeah, say yeah, it. For sure. But uh, so so still, uh, I love I love uh, what we're talking about and the way we we, we navigate through the 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 the, the story. But uh, what I'm trying to to understand is like I might be wrong, but I, I feel like. At least since I know you, you have, put it, we, we have been putting more uh, time and effort on your, um, on your surfing, you know? You, yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least first season you came here, I don't remember to seeing you at all, uh, you know, towing in. And now you're becoming uh, kind of regular on, on the lineup, you know? So what's, what, it's just for fun, it's, it's just making the most of the, 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 the time you spend here or you got any goals? What, what's the, the thing? Well, now the, and I mean, I think now as I realize it's like uh, my passion is to ride in waves. It doesn't matter if it's on the stand-up ski or if it's uh, towing or paddling. Yeah. Uh, I, I like to do also foiling a little bit. I'm learning too. It's just to think that uh, I think any kind of riding on the, yeah, on the just way, having fun. It's it's what I like now. You no, know? that's that's spending my time doing that. My energy, uh, also part of my money mm-hmm. into it, because because this uh, athlete life, it's not not easy. It's not easy, and 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 yeah, because of the jet skin, I start doing like uh, surfing. When I start like competing, and I wanted to improve and get better in the competition wise at, at the start my mentor taylor told me like man you have to watch surfing videos if you want to learn yeah. you need to watch surfing videos makes sense and surfing videos and surfing videos. and then i start only to see surfing videos and i start watching john john videos um, slater videos and start like learning the sport of surfing because I was born in the city. I was uh, always riding on the lake. I was never into a, into a surfboard. I started learning to surf six years ago. Six years ago. Six years ago. So that's crazy because, of course, you have a, a whole background on free ride. But if we think about, like, we, you, you start surfing six years ago and you... What you have done already, Nazare, you know, like you already have surfed, I don't know, I'm, I, I, I hate to measure waves, but you have surfed like proper big waves already with six years of experience. It's crazy, right? It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, but let's get back a little bit. So you said that you were born on a city. Where, where, where are you? Mexico City. Mexico I'm from City. Mexico City. Uh, raised and born there for many, many years. And then... Uh, like 25 years 
I moved from uh, Mexico City to Cancun, which is in Quintana Roo, because of work. It was opportunity to leave out the city, which I was like tired to being on the city and be close into the ocean. It's not the best uh, surfing uh, destination, but it's a pretty cool place to live. And six years ago, I decided to move from Cancun to Puerto Escondido, Oaxaca, to develop my surfing. And that's where it all started. Exactly. Like, yeah. That's when I, okay, because I've been trying from time to time to surf, but um, for surfing, especially when you uh, start that late, yeah, it's if you don't put the time on it, yeah, it, it will never happen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, one curiosity, so we were talking about uh, uh, life of an athlete, and it's not easy. And one thing um, surfers suffer a lot. It's when traveling, carrying all the, the surfboards and stuff. And I, I just wonder, like, it's hard to carry like guns and and the quiver, but carrying a jet ski, a free ride jet ski, must be even crazier, right? How, how, how do you manage to to travel the world with a with a free ride jet ski? It's a whole different logistics. Super hard to to put it together. Super expensive, I guess. It's of course it's more expensive. It's not that expensive as, as uh, people may think, but um, it definitely needs more work and preparation. You cannot just jump into the airplane with the yeah, like last with minute yeah. on the back yeah, yeah, yeah. and you <laughs> go. No, you have to uh, you have to uh, prepare the ski, put it in a wood crate. We put it inside this. Uh, uh, try to be a smaller and the wood crate. And then you have to uh, hire um, a custom broker and like sea freight, air freight, depend where you go. Yeah. And ship it. And, and yeah, it's a yeah. lot of uh, work, time, and also expensive. But um, I mean, uh, at the end, it's, uh, it's your equipment. Yeah. And, and if you want to perform and feel confident, it will be better if you do it with your own equipment. Yeah. And especially in a place like, like Nazareth, that it's so demanding yeah. that uh, you need to have the right equipment. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Nazareth. So um, it's, uh, how, much, uh, how many seasons you've been here already? It's like I the... started coming in 2015. I, I came every winter since then, like a couple of times in the winter, but I never stay the whole season. I always came for a run of swells. When I saw that the swell was consistent, big, clean, I came and decided to stay for a month, maybe, and then go back to my house and then came back. And because of the all the jet ski shipping and all that, like take time and preparation, I was trying to make the most of it. But um, I started doing that in 2015. And but not, right now, this is going to be my third full season. First full season in a row, right? In a row. So uh, first time that I met you it was your first full season, I guess, mm -hmm. three three years ago. About that, like like yeah. this is. Third year, yeah. And uh, so, uh, uh, what's your? I don't want to say goal, but what's your mission here? What 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 uh, drive you here? Why are you coming so often, and why are you spending more and more time here? Well, it's so um, it's such a crazy journey. Everything that happened on 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 the sport and my life, you no, know, because it's reflecting on my life, personal life. When I start to come back to com to competition, jet ski competition, I have a full-time job. So I was working on my office, taking the time just to go to these competitions three, four days, then go back to work, mm -hmm. get permit for my bosses. And, and I start doing that for maybe two, three years. And then after that, I was like between this, uh, thoughts about like, I don't, I don't like the way I live. I need to change my life. And, and I, I, I'm enjoying to do this and I'm enjoying to travel. I'm enjoying to competition, to meet people, like all that experiences that uh, I say, I don't want to work anymore. And I want to focus on that. 
And it's kind of a little bit of, uh, if you uh, read about free riding, the meaning of uh, free riding, it's when uh, everything is uh, non-planned. You just ride, and as you see something, it's an expression of what's happening in that moment and what you're doing. And that thing takes you to a different places. So at that time, I decided to quit my job. And oh, 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 sorry, just to 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 put it in um, in time. How long? Uh, when it was? That was around 2015, 16, when okay. I started like like more. I was already top three in the world. I was like trying to get uh, the championship and dedicate to myself into that. We were traveling around the world. We have uh, races in uh, Japan, Australia, France. United States, we have a couple of in Mexico. And then in those locations, imagine like you go to Australia only for like 10 days and you have to go back, you know? And then I start like, okay, I can stay and meet with my friends and ride for a whole month and then travel to a different city and do that and start like enjoying that. And so I start doing like that. And and then that's when I, uh, I, I quit my job and start like being a professional athlete, like trying to develop that uh, that thing, and start like I don't know, get sponsor, get sponsored by uh, the industry first, and then I got sponsored by Monster Energy, so I was able to develop that uh, athlete. What was um was an important uh, moment when you like when Monster. Uh, step in and start to sponsor you yeah of course it's uh, like not only monster energy of course uh, the the weight the brand um, uh, it's really important especially because my sport or the jet ski thing it's not a huge thing but uh, i think what i do it's uh it's go with the true core of the brand with monster energy that it's like motorsports more than uh, surfing uh, seen it's like motorsports they really into that and so yeah of course for me being a mexican athlete to be sponsored by monster energy was was huge and not only the, because it's one of the brands that i would like like really economic help for uh be able to to be here to travel to make content and get uh, some exposure that uh and these days with the with uh, all this, uh, I don't know, with uh, social media stuff, it's super hard to make a living of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were going all the way through Nazare. So why you are spending that much time in Nazare now and not in Hawaii or Me Me Mexico? You, you do like off season Me uh, in Mexico, I mean, full season in Mex Mexico, uh, half year and full season in Nazare, another half year, right? It's just Nazare, it was since the first time that I was here, it was a huge connection with the place. It was, it changed my life. Since that first year that I came, that I feel the vibe, and then we talk about a project to film. Uh, it was always on my mind, and I put a lot of energy when I was back home, and this, uh, the, that project, like, was born. And I, in my mind, I have this idea to bring and do something. And at the end, that uh, that project like grow and 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 and, and became like that uh, love letter to Nazare. So that moment and all those experiences like changed me forever. So for for, for those who don't know, uh, a love letter for 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 Nazare is, is a documentary, right? It's a documentary uh, on YouTube, and yeah. it was made about like. Uh, Around that, of 15, 2015, 2016. 2016, right. Yes. So, it's a documentary that uh, it was involving my idea at the beginning was only jet skiing, and then uh, this producer took it and say, okay, we're gonna do this uh, story about uh, the place, and and he involved uh, uh, some athletes like uh, Justine was there, Hugo Bao. Uh, some important surfing uh, community in Nazareth at that time. It was like 
the beginning of everything. And this project just was like, it, it's, I think it's one of the best projects that I've been involved, uh, for sure. And the quality of the project is super good. And since that moment, like, it changed me forever, no? Like, I got a special, like, I feel a special bond with uh, Nazareth since then. And every time that I can, I'm, I'm just coming back. I remember watching uh, before I knew that I will be in the filmmaking industry. I was a military by then, but I remember to watch it somehow, somehow it, I don't know, it popped up popped out on, 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 I don't know, Facebook, YouTube, somewhere. And I, that's, I think, was the first time that I, that I saw free ride jet ski. And the first time that I saw you, I think, was. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> that's, a, 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 that's a really crazy sport. I don't know. I have no idea how the industry is because I've never been too involved. The only connection that I have with free ride jet ski is through you, is working with you. And uh, it's a really, really interesting sport because, like, um, I remember going to, to film you in Lorigna for the, the, the world uh, tour stop there. And the waves were, like, was flat almost, was, like, uh, this size, was, like, really, really small. And I was like, what, what are they going to do? And you guys were still flying and still putting on, on a show, you know? So, like... Any other wave sports, you always have this uh, this thing. If the conditions are not good enough, you know, you, it will uh, manifest into the show. You know, you need good waves to have a good show. But in free ride jet ski, you, you pretty much can put on a show in any condition, right? So um, that that's a, a thing that I would like to understand better. How, how's the the free ride jet ski industry going? Is it's it's growing at better times? Um, there's many people, but like being a professional on the sport, how, how's like the industry? I think right now all the industries are struggling. Um, all all the the especially this uh, free riding thing it's very specific and the niche is very uh it's very small that uh, it's really hard to make a a living of it you know uh only a few people i think it's making like you can count like three or four people that i like, really get a sponsorship and getting paid uh, all this crisis and covid yeah. And now the war and all those, uh, and, and also one it's like super important, it's like, uh, the, um, the regulations of, uh, of, uh, how you say it, uh, the government, the, 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 the uh, ambientalistas. Ah, okay. 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 It's changing mm -hmm. in the United States. It's forbidden now to ride, uh, in the many places, a two stroke engine. So the jet, these jet skis, my jet ski. It's got a 1100 cc two-stroke engine. Mm -hmm. So now everything is changing to uh, four strokes. It's like the regular web yeah. runners have that engine. So that's make it even harder. There's some places. The whole USA? In some, you can only ride in some areas. Okay. In, uh, in, in the ocean. Okay. I mean, in the ocean, it's, it's almost forbidden in every place that you can ride the ski close to the like, to the we, shore, we, like, like here. Nazare is like... Uh, Nazare is the only place that you can do it because they allowed it yeah. to do it because of uh, there's no way you can swim yeah. and there's no people. But imagine in some other places that you cannot get into yeah. that close. So it make it hard to ride in some places. Mexico is pretty flexible because there are no regulations at all. Uh, but uh, in some other places, it's, it's, it's hard. And then, because it's so little, the industry, it's uh, super expensive. So it's hard to get into the sport because uh, you spend a lot of money into it. So people will, it takes a lot of time too, mm -hmm. and effort. Because yeah. it's not easy to bring one of those keys to the, uh, to the yeah. water. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But it, you feel like um, it's a growing sport. You think you, at better times, it's like, 
you feel the, the best times of the sport are still to come in terms of sponsors, in terms of uh, exposure, in terms of, um, you know, what's your point on, 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 the, on the sport? I think the way that you put it that right now, it's uh, how the economic impact the sport. Yeah. Because, uh, of course, in 2015, it was a free ride world tour. And we were getting paid to travel the world with our jet ski. And in this moment, we don't have that anymore. So the organization just, uh, I think the sports, it happened the same with the, with the big wave uh, championship. It disappeared. So, of course, if you measure like that in that moment, it was a better time for the competition-wise, yes, for sure. But uh, for me right now, it's uh, the sport or the things that I do right now, it's the better place is, is this moment because the equipment, it's, it's the best equipment that I ever had. It's right now, it's my, the best level that I ever had. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's true what you say. Like now it's super hard to, uh, to make a living that uh, I think it's only going to uh, be with the, the people that follow the passion to ride. And it's been like that, as many other sports. Yeah, yeah. But 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 now we we have this thing with the social media on, on, and all that stuff that created this. Uh, you know, back in the days, if you were sponsored for any brand, like they want to see results, right? They want to see you winning contests. And now it's more about creating content and you know and, and staying relevant and uh, you know being busy on social media or might not be social media might be projects like documentaries and many other stuff um and uh, in, in that way I, I i understand that you probably if i understood well you you like for you like is the best time right better than than the competitions were better, had more money because you also made a name, you grew, um, and um, I guess what I'm trying to 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 see is uh, like how your sponsors uh, feel about like um, you know you putting more uh, into the free ride itself than in the competition, like more creating content. I guess this is like where you are right now, right? Yeah, uh, definitely after COVID, everything changed. Yeah. Uh, in many sports, not only free riding, but many sports like in COVID, because you were not able to do anything or any event, uh, they focus more on that, on produce content. And they, a lot of brands, they uh, find out that they don't have to invest that much money into competition or a big sport. And then they just put a little bit of money into that with some uh, good content and they will get the same or more. More I probably, know, more yeah, 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 yeah. Than that. And that changed everything. But uh, there's some brands that they like that. You know, like uh, making content and they don't care about the contest thing. Because sometimes, especially with the free riding contest, that doesn't happen in the surfing because surfing, they have a waiting period and mm -hmm. they wait for the right conditions to mm -hmm. make it. And so when it's happening, there's going to be a good content because there's some good way. Yeah. But for instance, in the jet ski competitions, as it's so elaborate and you need to have permits and then you need to have... a uh, a lot of things uh, going on, uh, they cannot wait. They set up a date and we're going to go no matter what. So I remember one of the times, crazy thing ever I saw. Here in Nazare, we came to a contest and it was flat. Like it was Playa de Vila. It was like, imagine summer, August, on July, and it's flat, no waves at all. It was like that. And they run it? We wait for the tide. We wait, wait, wait for the time. Instead of uh, start the contest in um, start the contest in the morning, we start the contest in the afternoon where the tide changed and it was a little bit of wait. And and 
Unfortunately, it's happened. Imagine, like, all people traveling around the world, photographers, people from Australia, people from Kirchner, and then you came to that. Yeah. That it's, I always thought that it was, that was not good for the sport. Yeah. But it is what it is, yeah. and we have to do the best of it. And at this time, for instance, for example, I only go out when it's a good way. Yeah. You know? So, so oh, oh, you are happy with this new thing? Because it's not just in free ride, it's in the whole sports, like this kind of... Uh, um, uh, how can I how can I put this out uh, like this athlete influencer right where you create content or you were more like old school and you were like you will you like more this new thing of putting content out and and getting paid getting sponsors by hit or or you love more the competition. The thing is with the competition right now it it changed at the beginning when I started doing the competition and take it so serious, it was uh, the time to make my name into the sport. So I dedicated everything, training, time and effort and team to uh, to make my name into the sport. But I already passed that. You know, now, now if uh, you ask anyone in the jet ski thing knows my name, they know what I do. So it's like uh, right now, uh, I'm most, more focused on do the things that I like. And I don't want to ride. If I came to a contest or something and I see a wave, like not a three foot wave, it's like there's no point to go out. Yeah. And if the wave is just a bad wave, I don't want to ride it because I'm not going to jump it. And that's it. So I'm more. Now searching for uh, a good ways to ride. That's what I'm always trying to get when it's big, when it's a, a good shape of wave, and trying to get into a, a good wave. That's what I like, and I think uh, that uh, fits right now the moment because uh, there's no competitions, no, no, no many. Yeah. And but you can still have this amazing. Uh, shots, amazing videos, amazing content, put it together, and it's it's a thing that is thrilling. Yeah. So we are now uh, December something, uh, 2023. You are in Azare. You are planned to stay here till March. Um, I have a, a visa until the end of April, so I can stay until the end okay. of April, but I'm making plans to. Come to live to Portugal. Come living here? Yeah. Ah, my man. And uh, my question is, my question doesn't sound question, question, my question <laughs> is what's next for Abraham? What are you, what are you, what's, what are you visualizing? Well, um, I feel like Nazare, it's a, it's a, for me, the place, it's a super, it fits my skills, because I know how to ride a ski, and here you need a ski. So that's why the towing is like natural for me. I also do a lot of wakeboarding, and I have a lot of experience doing that. So the towing thing, it was very natural to me too. So I think that, uh, I believe that my skills that I have with the ski and the place, this and this, it's, uh, it's, it's like natural for me to be here. So, the goal and my plan is to stay here and enjoy it and develop uh, the passion that I have for riding waves and waiting for, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter about like, I want to catch the biggest swell of my life and that it doesn't, it's not like that anymore. Sometimes the biggest swell is not the best swell. Yeah, for sure. The medium swells, they have a better shape. So just uh, just have fun and enjoy enjoy the ride here in in Nazare and learning a lot because it's it's a whole process. This uh, it it has been a lot of years that I've been here, but I, every single time that I go out, I learn something something new, and that's I think that's that's what is uh, most important. It's to keep learning and develop. Uh, 
keep developing on uh, surfing, towing, and on the jet ski too. You here, you definitely uh, reached many of your goals. You are making a living doing what you love. And this is uh, something very powerful, you know? So why do, uh, the way I want to finish the, pot, the podcast, the, the, the drop talk the thing is by you uh, just putting a message out for someone that might be fighting to make a living doing what they love, you know? So if you see any kid that is trying to be a world champion in free ride, free ride or any other thing, what will be your message? What, uh, what was the, the, the mindset that you have to, mm -hmm. to put on yourself to achieve your goals? What do you think that is the most important thing? Whatever, just put it out for the ones that are seeking their goals. Mm. Well, um, I think you have to, the most important thing is you have to believe that uh, you, can, you can do it. Uh, you have to put the work into it and try to be as professional as uh, you can in every single aspect of uh, what you're doing. Uh, you have to be committed and you have to, you have to work hard. I, I think that's, a, that's an example in every single sport, the people that I, that I or learn or read or, or being with, um, easy things don't happen just because. You know, like you have to put the work into it no matter what. And uh, and if you wanna if you wanna be ready for it, yeah, when I started in Mexico City in Mexico, uh, riding a ski, dreaming about to be a world champion of my sport, uh, it took a lot of dedication and sacrifice to be able to do it and and at the end, it, it pay off. Maybe, maybe not pay me in money <laughs> that much as I, I wanted, but um, the recognition of uh, all the, that effort and, and it, it's, it's something special that like give me a lot and not money away. So I think the most important is that, is like belief, uh, take chances, Sometimes it's, it's super, it's, uh, you get scared and you're afraid to try new things because it's, I think is the way we are and you have to, uh, risk sometimes. And no risk, it. no reward, right? Exactly. And at, the, at least with me, it was like that. I didn't know where, where I was going, but I, I knew that I want to go that and now I'm in places that I never imagined that I was on it. And this, this is, I am here and I don't know where I'm going now, but it's the same energy and, and committed. So I think work hard. It's, it's the key. Word up my man. Abraham, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much. Was, was great. It's, it's funny cause when I talk with Abraham, it's a, a mix of uh, Spanish with Portuguese, Portuñol, Spanish, English. So it's our first time having a conversation in English, like full time in English. It was, yeah. was fun. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is the um, second season. We're planning to bring away more people. We're planning to be more consistent. We are planning to be more on time. Don't take so much time to put the stuff out. So uh, please share with your friends, put a like, comment, all that stuff. Comments, I, we love comments because it's, it's, it's uh, something that we can go back to you and just a like or, you know, it's, it's not the same. So thank you very much and uh, we catch up soon.